Hi, this is Straight Pass. I'm going to do a reaction to another Mr. Nightmare story. This one is called Three Scary S True Summertime Horror Stories. Again, like I said, I'm a big fan of Mr. Nightmare, and I've been doing uh, uh, a bunch of his videos for the past couple of days, and uh, this is a, another one, summer, and it's kind of apropos since the summer is getting ready to end. It's going to be Labor Day next Monday, so kind of appropriate. And again, please hit the like, subscribe button, and I'll link Mr. Nightmare's channel in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. So let's get right to it, and I'll be right back with my reaction. Hey, let me put my headphones on. Okay, let me get a little closer. There we go. Okay, here we go. There we go. Here we go, right now, go. Summer Horror Stories. Boom, boom. Story one by Moorheart. Whatever that is. Boom, boom. Summer is the greatest season by a long shot. That's a hill I'll die on any day. My love for the summer doesn't revolve around partying or drinking as you may expect, but nature. Okay. Warmer weather and the outdoors are inseparable in my opinion, and I guarantee okay. you that when the heat rolls through, I spend more hours outside than inside. It was a warm night in mid-June a few summers ago when this happened. I was okay. 17 or 18 at the time. For context, okay. there's a massive nature preserve near my house. When I say massive, I mean it. It's close to a thousand acres in size. To this day, there are still parts of it that I'm positive I haven't explored. Two of my friends and I agreed to spend a night camping in those woods. Technically, camping there was strictly forbidden and borderline illegal, but we figured okay. that there was no chance someone would catch us in this dense forest. we just have to trek as deeply as possible. Chuck was the camping fanatic of the group. I'm telling you, this kid loved cosplaying as a boy scout and probably knew close to a hundred different knots. Our other friend Jackson always supplied the drinks. If we were sober, he was unhappy. That's just how things went when Jackson was involved. I remember the feeling of the gentle summer breeze blowing through my hair as the three of us packed up Jackson's car. The weather was ideal, not too cold, not too hot. A few okay. beers later, the three of us found ourselves lugging camping equipment through the woods at like 11.30. I can't lie, I was feeling the alcohol start to hit me as we marched along. Chuck always carried this industrial grade flashlight with him, so the darkness of the forest wasn't much of an issue. As much as I enjoyed the outdoors though, traversing through thick woods at this hour was a bit creepy, even with Chuck's flashlight on hand. After close to half an hour of straight walking, the three of us found ourselves in a small, flat clearing that was an ideal spot to set up camp. Okay. We pitched our tent as per Chuck's instruction and set our chairs up. The fire was the next step. Chuck once again took the lead on this, and after a few more minutes, we had a pretty decent fire going. Jackson reached into his bag and tossed me another drink. He then grabbed his JBL speaker and started playing some music. The vibe was perfect, and we must have been talking and drinking for a good two hours. We were all pretty drunk at that point, and I could tell the other guys were just about ready to pack it up for the night. Jackson turned the music down and started collecting discarded beer cans. Just then, a deafening whistle pierced the silence. Oh boy. <laughs> I nearly jumped out of go. my seat, going from drunken haze to high alert in a matter of seconds. I don't know how to describe it. The whistle was abnormally loud, but still sounded distant. Jackson quickly shut the speaker off, and the three of us sat in silence as we exchanged concerned looks. I could feel my heartbeat pounding through my chest. We sat there, frozen in place for what seemed like forever listening intently to our surroundings, but there was nothing. It almost seemed quieter now than it had when we first got there, like eerily okay. quiet, not even the normal wood sounds you come to anticipate. I okay. used that time to play my memory of the whistle back in my head. It definitely wasn't an animal's noise. The best way I can describe it is a standard whistle you'd hear at a ballpark. Chuck finally broke the silence, quietly urging us to pack up and leave. Jackson and I disagreed with that plan, though. We might risk encountering whoever made the noise, which I was beyond terrified of. It was past 3 a.m. at this point, and an encounter this late would only mean trouble. Chuck hypothesized that whoever made that noise was probably aware of our presence, which was a chilling thought. I didn't know what to do. On one hand, staying put violated every survival instinct I had. Packing up and yeah. leaving at this hour didn't seem like a much better option either, though. We finally agreed to wait it out. I went to put the fire out, but Chuck cautioned me against it, saying that a fire yeah. would repel any dangerous animals. 
Only yeah. then did the true gravity of the situation smack me in the face. We were literally miles away from any civilization. It was 3 a.m., and there was an unknown entity somewhere in the darkness. Another 10 no minutes weapons. or so passed, and we had resumed talking, but at a much lower volume with no music. I don't mm. think any of us felt safe going to sleep just yet, though. And <laughs> then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw yeah. it. Something small flew over the darkness of Jackson's shoulder and landed directly in the fire. It was a firecracker. Oh. I screamed bloody murder as it started sparkling <laughs> in the fire, and Chuck oh, cursed man. as he sprung up out of his chair and bolted into the darkness. Jackson Jesus. and I scrambled to follow, leaving all of our <gasps> stuff behind. We Jesus. caught up with Chuck, whose flashlight was beaming wildly through the woods as he frantically sprinted. <laughs> we ran yeah. until we couldn't anymore, and Jackson keeled over and threw up. Jeez. Chuck shut the light off, and the three of us stood there, panting, trying to figure out if we were being followed. To my surprise, oh, it didn't seem like anyone followed us. I don't no. think I've ever been so afraid, though. Why in the so world would someone have done that? It's we needed to me. figure out what to do. Jackson Get wanted to just find our way out of the woods and never come back. But Chuck was <laughs> reluctant to leave all of his camping gear behind. Plus, yeah. he reminded us, the fire was still active. I was dumbfounded. How could he be concerned with forest fires after what had just happened? <laughs> Eventually, I agreed with Chuck that we should at least check on the site. After all, no one had actually chased us. So there was a slight possibility that whoever threw that firecracker was just playing a cruel prank. Yeah. Chuck was a navigational expert and was actually able to retrace our footsteps. I could make out the glow of the fire as we quietly approached. Before I could get any closer though, Jackson put a hand in front of me and pointed with a horrified look on his face. I strained my eyes to make out the sight in the distance. What I saw is probably the most terrifying thing I'd ever laid eyes on. There were three people sitting motionlessly in our chairs like statues. Whoa. The one Whoa. whose face I could see looked lifeless and his mouth was hung open. I was afraid to move. What were they even doing? I thought, realizing huh. that they weren't even talking. This was oh, not normal. Boy. The three of us watched for a little while longer before deciding to back off. We turned Jesus. to leave, but Jackson's foot clipped a rock, causing him to curse Ugh. in frustration. Of Within course. seconds, the glow from the fire abruptly went dark, as if it had been covered Jeez. with a cloak. It was freakishly Jeez. fast. We didn't Whoa. stick around another second. We again sprinted away from the site, but this time we yeah. could hear footsteps crashing behind us. Whoa. We didn't stop this time. We bolted out of the woods and ran all the way to Jackson's car. By some miracle, we weren't followed out of the woods. None of yeah. us spoke on the drive back. Each of us yeah. lost in our thoughts. The next yeah. day, Chuck insisted we return to the site in the daylight to collect his belongings. See, Jackson wanted nothing to do with that, but I agreed to accompany yeah. Chuck. After yeah. some searching, we eventually found the site, which looked mostly untouched. That is, until we got a little closer and noticed the putrid smell coming from Chuck's tent. He oh. unzipped it, and we found a dead, rotting rat. It was sickening. Whoa. I took the hint, and haven't been back to that preserve since. Mm. And why you go out there with no weapons? Story 2 by Bryson B. This ongoing issue started about a month ago, but let me provide some context first. I'm 24 okay. years old and I live with my parents. My family is not well off and never has been, and pretty much all okay. of the money I make goes into supporting the household. My relationship okay. with my parents is not the best. We bicker quite often, and whenever I'm not okay. working or hanging with friends, I tend to stick to myself. I don't want to write a hard luck story or anything like that, but I've had it tough growing up. Fitness has always been my go-to escape. I see it as a healthy way to get my mind off personal burdens, while also providing a good excuse to leave the house. There's a park about a 10 minute drive from my house that has a workout facility, with bars for pull-ups, dips, and other calisthenic exercises. During the summer months, I like to go there to work out as nature helps calm my mind. I like to go at nighttime because since it's a public park, it tends to get busy during the day. So one night, while my parents were arguing, I decided to slip out of the house to go work out. It was an extremely hot summer night, probably 85 degrees. I remember okay. breathing in the humid air as I walked from my doorstep to the beat up white Corolla sitting in our driveway. I started the rickety engine and rolled down the windows as the warm summer breeze flowed through my hair. I arrived at the park and exited my car. I was the only car in the lot. It was probably 10 or 11 p.m. The park oh, was completely God. empty at this time. 
the yeah, beautiful okay. scenery mixed with the steamy air to create a soothing atmosphere, which is another reason why I like this park so much. It sits on top of a hill that overlooks the downtown area of my city, which always adds pleasant and sentimental emotions to my evenings. Anyway, I started a set on the pull-up bar. I wasn't really counting the repetitions. When I work out, I just do it till failure, then take a break and do it a couple more times. It was somewhere between my sets when I took a break to loosen up my arms. Before I got back on the bar though, an indescribable feeling came over me, and a subconscious oh. urge forced me to turn my head around. Standing literally a foot away from my face was a tall, beaten looking man. I actually oh. screamed and jumped like five feet back. He let oh. out a raunchy, boisterous laugh and apologized, saying he didn't mean to scare me. His appearance and mannerisms were extremely eccentric right off the bat, like he was damn near face to face with me. He clearly had something wrong with him. I asked him why he was so close to me, and he said he lives <laughs> here. He explained that he sees me working out here all the time, and asked me if I could oh. teach him. Oh, now, I'm a very non-confrontational type of person, and especially during a time like that, I really just wanted to be left alone. I yeah. awkwardly but politely told him I'm just going to do some pull-ups and leave. I hopped back on the bar and continued my set. His words marinated in my mind. He sees me here all the time? Yep. I felt the gaze of his eyes burning the back of my neck. But like I Jeez. said, I'm very non-confrontational. While he did make me increasingly uneasy, I didn't really know what to say or do about it. But then about something leave? really weird happened. Right as I was about to finish my set, I heard him mutter my full name. My blood instantly turned cold as I jumped off the bar what? and slowly backed away. I said a what? shaky, what? He didn't respond, and instead just stared at me with this crazed, wide-eyed smile. I thought I might have been hearing things, that's how bizarre it was. I started to get an awful feeling in my gut, like something bad was about to happen. Without yeah. another word, I decided to quickly walk back to my car and leave. Sprint. I felt that man staring at me while I retreated, and thankfully he didn't follow me. Before I left the park though, I took one last look, and I saw him hanging from the bar, attempting to do a pull-up. <laughs> I watched as he grabbed the bar, tried to pull himself up, and then failed and tried again, in the exact position I was previously in. I swiftly left the park without looking back. The entire ride back, I questioned myself. Did he really say my name? Was I hallucinating? Oh. I tried oh. to forget about it, and eventually I did. I woke up early the next day to get to work. I work construction and I have to wake up very early before my parents. So I was okay. the first one to notice the unmarked envelope sitting at my front door. It was addressed Whoa. to me. I picked uh -oh. it up and figured I'd read whatever was inside whenever I had the chance. It was another sweltering hot summer day, and I took my lunch break early to cool down. I sat in my car while eating my pre-made sandwich and decided to open the envelope. I didn't really know what to expect, but never in a million years did I think I'd find 10 printed photos of me. Oh, oh. They were all unknowingly taken. One was oh. of me in my car, one was of me at work, one was of me exercising at the park. I Whoa. instantly remembered that creepy man from the night before and started to feel uncontrollably nauseous. Jeez. I stared in disbelief as I flipped through the rest of them. One was of my house, and the worst of all was a photo of me sleeping, taken from oh. outside my window. I nearly choked on my food as tears rolled down my cheeks. Jesus. I felt unsafe. I told my boss a serious issue popped up and I left work right away. He oh wasn't happy God. with me, but I didn't care. I took a picture of the photos and drove directly to the police station. I gave Good. the police the photos and explained my encounter at the park. I described the man to them and they said they would look into it. I told my parents about it too, and for the first time in a long time, I actually got some sympathy out of them. More <laughs> things started happening though. A couple oh. nights later, at like 3 a.m., I awoke to knocks at the door. I didn't open it, assuming the worst. Oh. Oh. One day, I found a sticky note pasted to my car window with a heart drawn in Sharpie. I went back oh, to the Jesus. police to report this, and they said they Jesus. would open up a stalker investigation. I haven't Jesus. heard back from them yet. I figured it's hard to build a case without having concrete evidence. This oh, happened about man. a month ago, and I've been on high alert ever since. My Jeez. parents are looking for a new home, which is already tough given our financial situation. I'll update yeah. if anything further happens, but until then, I'll continue to sleep with one eye open. Yeah, I would imagine. Jesus, that's freaky. 
Story 3 by Dosher. Oh my god. This happened to me last summer when I was 22. I wasn't a very outgoing kid at the time. If I ever did anything social, it was because my degenerate friends had somehow dragged me out of the house. This was one of those times. Well, it was supposed to be. My friend Philip invited me to a house party at like 8 p.m. It was okay. pretty spontaneous, but I had nothing going on, so I reluctantly agreed to go with him. I knew he was going to give me crap if I refused. I can't even lie though, the idea of a party, even with strangers, sounded more appealing than being alone. Philip was a few towns over from me, so it made more sense for us to drive separately instead of going together. He gave me the Addy and I was on my way. The literal second I pulled onto the street, Philip bailed at the last minute. Rightfully so, I was super frustrated. How could he bail on me like this? There I was, feeling like a complete idiot outside a stranger's house. Annoyed but determined not to waste the night, I decided to go in. Drove all the way here, I thought. Might as well go inside. I walked up the front steps and knocked on the door. The host, Randy, greeted me warmly. He was instantly likable, charismatic and friendly without being a douchebag. He introduced <laughs> me around and things were actually less awkward than I had anticipated. People okay. were really friendly to me despite not knowing who I was. There were even a few yeah, girls cool. I had my eyes on. I decided to enjoy the party and hit the booze. Hard. It was getting pretty late, but the party was still raging. Admittedly, oh, I might have overdone it with the drinking. At one point, I was so nauseous and dizzy that I needed a break. It must have been close to 2 a.m. at that point. I went upstairs to look for a bathroom, but they were all occupied. The house was deceptively big. Granted, it was probably the alcohol, but I was literally getting lost stumbling through the maze of hallways up there. After okay. making it to the top floor, I found a door leading to what seemed like an attic or storage room. Desperate for privacy, I figured it was as good a place as any to pull myself together. I groped okay. around blindly for the light switch, but there was none. This was definitely an attic or something, as there was also okay. dust everywhere. There was a window in the far corner which I opened, allowing the cool night breeze to wash over me. There was a solid minute there where I was seriously considering throwing up onto the roof. The <laughs> breeze somewhat cured my nausea though, so I just kept my head hung out of the window. It was dark outside, and the quiet was a refreshing contrast to the boisterous chaos downstairs. Sometimes all you need to restore your state of mind is a gentle breeze and some peace and quiet. Just okay. as I was about to close the window and head back, I heard a faint noise. Footsteps on the roof shingles. Uh oh. That didn't make any sense though, was I going crazy? Curious, I climbed out onto the roof. In all honesty, there was probably a 0% chance I would have done that if I had been sober. I slowly <laughs> stood up and looked around. In the moonlight, I saw something terrifying. There were two masked figures with bags emerging from another window. It Whoa. dawned on me, Randy's house was being robbed. I started Whoa. panicking. Should I shout, confront them? Then a more pressing question hit me. What if they were armed? In my clumsy yeah. state of disbelief, I slipped and scuffed one of the shingles pretty loudly. One of the oh, burglars yeah. heard it and jolted his head in my direction. Jeez. Our eyes briefly met and I froze. Mm. He nudged his partner and the two of them quickly started making their way across the roof. Adrenaline oh, surged through me. I couldn't let them get away. Randy had been so welcoming, and I felt a surge of loyalty. I decided to act. I quietly <laughs> followed the burglars across the roof, keeping a safe distance. They headed towards a sloping part of the roof for an easier escape. As they climbed down, I pulled out my phone to dial 911, but fumbled in my drunken state, dropping it. Uh. The phone oh. clattered loudly and the burglars turned sharply. Who's there? One of them hissed. Heart oh, pounding, boy. I ducked and scanned my surroundings, spotting Jesus. a loose roof shingle. Without thinking, I grabbed it and hurled it towards them. It missed, what? but the noise startled them, causing one to lose his footing. He Whoa. tumbled down the roof, crashing into the gutter before falling to the ground. The other Jeez. burglar, now panicked, leaped to a neighboring tree and scrambled down. I rushed Jeez. to the edge of the roof and saw the fallen burglar, groaning on the ground. I needed to alert everyone. As I turned to head back, I heard sirens. Someone else must have called the cops. I stumbled okay. back into the attic room and made my way downstairs, trying to appear yeah. calm. The party was still in full swing, oblivious to the drama outside. I found Randy laughing and chatting with guests. 
Randy, you need to call the police. There's been a robbery. I saw the burglars on the roof, I said. Mm. Randy's face turned from amusement to shock. Are you mm. serious? He said. As he hurried to make the call, I explained what happened. The party mood shifted from celebration to concern. Mm. Apparently, one of Randy's neighbors had coincidentally already called the police to file a noise complaint, which was an incredibly oh. ironic turn of good fortune. When they arrived, I recounted my story, leading them to the injured burglar. The man was arrested, but his partner had fled. The party ended abruptly. People started scattering and the lights got flipped on. I tried my best to act sober, but even after all that happened, I was still stumbling a bit. Randy thanked me profusely, still in disbelief. As for me, I was just glad I could help, despite the bizarre and terrifying circumstances. <laughs> Looking back, I still can't really explain why the burglars would have chosen a house having a party to rob. But maybe they exactly. had prior knowledge of the house and knew no one would be upstairs. Yeah. I figured that would be the end of the story. But fast forward a few months, and I've got quite oh. the update. I was playing cool. video games at Philip's house one night when he got a call from Randy, who invited us over for a few beers. Up until that point, I hadn't actually realized the two of them were that close. The first oh. thing I noticed when I pulled up to Randy's house was the front door and every window in sight were completely different. Was I not remembering his house right? I could have sworn the windows and the front door had been white, but they were all gray and much more heavy duty looking. Randy waved us in and we went down to his basement. We cracked a few beers and started playing a game of pool. To my surprise, he actually recognized me from the party and thanked me again for my trouble. What he told okay. us was actually crazy though. Apparently, the burglar the police caught that night refused to snitch on his partner and was currently serving a lengthy prison sentence. The police yeah. hadn't been able to get any leads into catching the other guy, though. Yeah. Randy told us that not even a week after the incident happened, his family started receiving threatening letters from an unknown sender, some of which oh. included pictures of Randy and his family members. Jeez. Obviously, they reported these occurrences, but the police had no real leads. A month after that, Randy's mom noticed a suspicious vehicle circling the house at like 1 a.m. And a few oh. days later, Randy's dad claimed that things in their backyard had been gone through and moved around. In response, oh. Randy's dad upped their home security a degree and even went as far as to replace and reinforce all their doors and windows. I was shocked. This was still an ongoing issue for Randy and I had no idea how serious a situation like this could get. Summer's fast approaching and I'm sure I'll have another update when I see Randy again. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh man, that is crazy. That oh man, that is crazy. Oh man. Okay, those are three good stories. Uh that last story is just crazy. <laughs> you go to a party that you your friend bailed on you and actually the guy was decent enough to you, and then you stumble upon a robbery. That's 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 crazy. Oh man, that's and you have you actually did him a solid, but you know, actually you know, actually the neighbor saw, but you at least you alerted him to it. So that was you know that was good, and but that's freaky that one of them you know got locked up, and then the other one was trying to send threatening men. That's kind of stupid, but <laughs> people some people are just ridiculous. <laughs> With that stuff, that that was just crazy that you just happened upon it. But you, I tell you, I'll give you props. You were drunk and you still went up on onto the roof. That was that was crazy that you did that. Then your phone dropped. Oh my god! You, like I said, you're a you're a man among men. Uh, been doing that because most people would have said screw this and went back down. And but you actually you know were proactive even though you were drunk. <laughs> At least you tried to stop it. Okay, which is a actually props to you for you know trying to that. Although I think you should have went back in and. And just let them let the guy know, you know, that you know you got two robbers outside on the roof, and your neighbor called too. So that, so but you, like I said, you're a good dude. But yeah, actually, even in your drunken state, <laughs> trying to stop this guy's house from getting robbed, which is good. And it is probably somebody that knew that he was having a party and figured, you know, that nobody was upstairs, so that way they could rob it and stuff. Okay, again, some people are just slow life. Okay, just again, just really low life. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but the second story, oh my God, that is so freaky. Oh my God. And I can understand you wanting to work out, but why you got to work out at night? Okay. In the park. Okay. Uh, Jesus Christ. Okay. I know in the daytime it's more crowded and stuff, but no, I'm not going to a park 
in the middle of the night, okay, uh, or at, at after dark to work out, okay, by myself. That's nuts. And obviously, this guy was stalking you in those pictures. Oh, my God. He was actually stalking you. Oh, my God. And the guy knew your name. He said your name. You thought you you heard, you misheard it, but he did know your name because he actually took pictures of you sleeping in your, by, of your house. Oh, my God. And, oh, oh. That was just so freaky. That turned into a, a nightmare real quick. That's why I, I don't know what possessed you to go there. And I know there's less people there at nighttime, but that's nuts, okay, going to a park at night. No, uh, no. You, I know you like to work out there, but no, I go in the daytime. There's no way in the world I'm going there after dark, okay? It's a park, okay, after dark, okay? And no, I'm not, no. There's just too much, too many things that could happen to you. You know, it could be, even if you're working, it could be some... Kids, you know, coming by to mess, you know, and mess with you by yourself and want to mess with you. Any, anything could happen, okay? Okay, just, you're nuts for uh, <laughs> going there at nighttime. But that turned real hard, you know, into a real horror show with this guy. And he's, oh, my God, left a note with the pictures. Oh, my God. So he's actively stalking you. That is so freaky when, especially, you got to feel so violated when you don't, you know, Guy took pictures of you sleeping in your bed, which that is so freaky. That would totally freak me out if I if see an envelope underneath my door or something like that, and it was full of pictures. And one picture would me be me sleeping in my bed. Oh my god! And especially t if they were taken outside. Of the I got a fire escape there, so that would freak me out. Oh my god, that would freak me out to no end. <laughs> I would I probably wouldn't even sleep in this room anymore. <laughs> that would t totally freak me out to. Uh, <laughs> or maybe I, what I do is I put the a cabinet in front of that window just so nobody could ever break in. I, that would just that would just totally freak me out. Oh my god, that just turned into. I know, like I said, I know people have their habits and they like doing stuff, but no, exercise in a park on exercise equipment at night by yourself is nuts. Okay, you should always bring a buddy with you. Okay, that is just freaking nuts. Because again, what if that guy would have did something to you? Okay. And had a weapon, okay? And you're in the park by yourself, okay? That's, that's, people are just nuts for doing stuff like that. But anyway, uh, and then the first story, oh my God, these kids, okay. If you like camping, you like camping. I, I, okay, I, I was going to throw shade on people that do camping, but no. If you like camping, you like camping. But if you're going to go in the middle of the woods, okay, with your buddies, the three of you, bring some kind of weapon, okay? It's just common sense and logical. Okay, in case you run into some kind of animal or, again, rather less people, okay, some people that want to mess with you. Obviously, these people wanted to mess with you by throwing that firecracker in there, and then you come back and they're sitting in your chairs. Oh, my God. Come on. Obviously, these guys are probably stalking, you know, hanging out, and they probably saw you, you saw your fire, and they decided to mess with you, okay? But like I said, if you had a gun and you would have shot, okay, that would have stopped all of that, okay? So that's why if you're going to go camping, Always bring a weapon, and I mean, what by a weapon I mean a gun, if possible. Okay, okay, because at least that way you can frighten things off. But going into the woods by—I don't care how much you like camping, going into woods by your three friends, okay, with no and none of you have a weapon, you're nuts. Okay, you're a freaking nuts. I don't give a crap how much you like camping. Okay, okay, and like I said, I understand in these rural communities, you know, they like people like to camp, but they also like guns too and in this case that would be nice if you know you had a gun yeah yeah one of you three or all three of you had you know like shotguns or something okay that y'all could have you know brung with you to the woods okay and just that way in case anybody wants to do anything freaky or funny okay or who they think they're funny they're gonna scare you you can scare them back with real life weaponry okay this uh, i just oh my god that's just okay uh, that's just insane and then you run it and then you Running, oh my God, that could have ended really badly. Okay, for the three of you, oh my God, uh, just again, I, I I don't see the fascination. Okay, I'm not a camper, I'm a city boy, so I don't see the the I don't see the uh, that's not my thing to go go out in the middle of the woods in a tent. Okay, at night, no, no, I just I have zero desire to do any kind of camping. Okay, zero. Okay, but if you're gonna do it, you make sure you have weapons. Okay. Okay, you follow the rules of camping and also, like I said, have a weapon with you. Okay, get a, have a licensed gun and make sure that way 
nobody can do any anything you know because again you got sick people that want to want to mess with you again like i said those three guys probably those guys probably saw you and your friends coming in and would say oh okay some young punks let's let's freak them out okay and and come on i don't want to get free i don't want to get messed with when i'm trying to enjoy myself in the woods with my friends okay guys want to be they want to be you know i'm gonna say the a word okay i'm not here for it okay okay exactly we're if we're going to the woods we're bringing a gun okay so we you know we're we're protected okay okay against animal or man okay either one okay i'm going to be protected okay so anyway I, I still think the second story is that story is kind of freaky but the second story to me is the best one that do going into the park at night although like i said that's that's insanity going to a park at night by yourself to exercise okay no okay by no okay and see that guy wind up the guy knew who he was actually but as was observing him coming to the park and then basically stopped he probably followed him home even one night probably and just oh my god he knew your house took the, the pictures that's the freaky stuff the pictures that he put put underneath your door that is so scary oh my god I, I felt so bad for you and your family okay i have to go through this this guy is stalking you oh man uh, hopefully this story is real they they catch him okay and that just before anything bad happens to you okay again my heart goes out <laughs> to you about that but anyway let me know what you think of these three summertime horror stories true horror, horror stories by mr nightmare three true scary uh, three summertime horror moves let me uh horror stories let me know what you think of them Again, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'll leave a link to Mr. Ch Nightmare's channel in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. Also, I have links to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. Also, I have a link to my other channel, Paul Views and Opinions. If you check that out as well. Also, I have a link down below to my patron. And again, my patron's only $5 a month. I have tons of content on there, tons of unedited content on there. I have over 190 videos on there. I have everything broken down into collections. I have five collections, different collections. I have a movie collection. I have a DC TV show collection, I have a Marvel TV show collection, I have a Star Wars TV show collection, and I have a Gen V and the Boys collection, okay? I have everything divided into those five collections so it's easier to navigate, and you get five-minute previews of all the videos that I have on the channel, okay? So follow the link down below if you want to support me that way. Also, uh, down below, I have a link to my uh, merchandise store. I started a merchandise store a couple of weeks ago, okay? That's another way for me to earn money to put into my channel. If you follow the link down below, it'll take you to my merchandise store, We'll have tons of, I have t-shirts for sale, hats, mugs, water bottles, sweatshirts, hoodies, uh, a lot of things. You've been seeing them in my videos. Unfortunately, today, I didn't, you know, I kept the shirt on and I came home from work and so I'm not wearing <laughs> one of my merchandise store. But uh, I have w one logo. It's my Trey Passer, my user, tra uh, YouTube uh, username, Trey Passer, that was designed for me by a great YouTuber named Jay. So thank you, Jay, for that. And I have it on, like I said, on sweatshirts, hats, baseball shirts, mugs, hats, uh, water bottles, sweatshirts, hoodies, the whole thing. And then I have another design, which is like spherical circles. Okay. And that's on, that's, I have a bunch of other stuff designed with that logo on it. Okay. Follow the link down below, uh, to my merchandise store. If you want to support me that way, also please give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel and I truly appreciate it. Also hit the subscriber, hit the notification bell. So you know when I upload new content to this channel and this is Trey Pass. I sing so long and take care.